डियर स्टूडेंट्स एंड माई टीचर फ्रेंड्स नमस्कार आई वेलकम यू टू द प्रेजेंटेशन लेक्चर ऑन लोअर लिम नाउ बिफोर आई स्टार्ट दिस प्रेजेंटेशन लेक्चर आई वुड लाइक टू टेल यू फ्यू थिंग रिगार्डिंग दिस प्रेजेंटेशन लेक्चर एज यू नो इन माई प्रीवियस लेक्चर ऑन लोअर लिम वी हैड डिस्कस दैट इन अवर ईच ऑफ द लोअर लिम <laughs> there are 30 bones and among this 30 bone in the previous lecture we had discussed about the femur and the tela so in this lecture uh, i am going to discuss with you the leg bone that are the tibia and fibula and the bones of our foot that the tarsals metatarsals and the phalanges and the important thing is the joints which are present between this foot bone and the tibia and fibula they are also involved in some of the joints so which are the joint and how this bones are associated <coughs> in this joint so <coughs> we are going to discuss all this thing in this lecture so starting with this first point this is the first point skeleton of the leg tibia so here in our leg both the bone of our leg the tibia and fibula are shown in the blue color now over here in this figure also you can see the tibia and this one is the fibula okay then this is the this one is the anterior view this is the anterior view and this one is the this one is the posterior view okay so starting with the first point now the skeleton of the leg <coughs> leg bone tibia now the tibia also known as the sin bone and tibia <coughs> is the larger medial so it is present in the center of our leg that means the medial it is medial and also it is bearing our body weight so it is a weight bearing bone of the leg the tibia is then the meaning of tibia how the term the tibia derive so in ancient time the people of that time they were using the bird's tibial bone <coughs> as the musical instrument so from the bird bird's tibial bone this bone has been given the name tibia so that is the meaning of the term tibia okay so this is the this is the first point of our discussion tibia bone now moving on the second point the joint of the tibia <coughs> where the tibia in which joint the tibia is associated or which are the joint the tibia is making now the tibia articulates at its proximal end with the femur and fibula in the figure i am showing you this is the femur and this one right now that i am drawing this is the tibia and this is the head of the fibula so as you can see the tibia the tibia is articulating at the proximal end with the femur and the fibula that is the meaning of this line and at the distal end what is happening it is articulating with the fibula as well and the talus bone of the ankle for example this is the right now i am showing you the distal end of the tibia and here you can see this one is the fibula 
so the distal end of tibia is articulating with the fibula and at the same time the distal end is also articulating with the talus bone of our ankle okay then between the tibia and fibula introsus membrane is present so here you can see this is the tibia this one is the fibula between tibia and fibula the introsus membrane is present this is introsus membrane so this is the second point of our discussion and these are the point that you need to observe for this second point now moving on the third point of our discussion now the proximal end of the tibia so at the proximal end of the tibia two expanded regions are present and these expanded regions are known as the lateral condyle and the medial condyle let me show you this in the figure for example <coughs> in this figure <coughs> this is the tibia is shown and at the top of the tibia at the proximal end as you can see this part is the medial condyle of the tibia and this part is the lateral condyle of the tibia now what this lateral and medial condyles are involved in so both this condyle they are making the joint between the condyles of the femur for example this is the medial condyle of tibia and this is the medial medial condyle of the femur this is lateral condyle lateral condyle of tibia and this one is the lateral condyle of the femur so the joint which is formed between the condyles of femur and the tibia this joint is known as tibio femoral joint or the knee joint so this is the knee joint and in our knee joint the condyles of tibia and femur are involved that is the meaning of this point okay so this is the theory point and this is the figure okay and for this i have already shown you this figure also now moving on the fourth point of our discussion now <coughs> in the fourth point the inferior surface of lateral condyle for example this is the lateral condyle and this is the inferior surface of lateral condyle and this inferior surface of lateral condyle as you can see it is articulating with the head of the fibula okay so in the fourth point lateral condyle first of all this is the lateral condyle inferior surface articulating with the head of the fibula this is the fourth point this is the theory point and this is the figure for it moving on the fifth point this is the fifth point again those two condyle okay this is the this one is the tibia this is the lateral condyle this one is the medial condyle and between this two condyle upward projection is present 
and this upward projection which is present between these two condyle that are the lateral and medial condyle that upward projection is known as intercondylar eminence so here this one is the intercondylar eminence so this is the theory point and this one this one is the figure so you can observe this figure okay for this theory point and this is the as you can now know this is the posterior view and the left hand side it is the anterior view so this intercondylar eminence is visible okay in the posterior view <coughs> towards the knee joint okay now sixth point now we have already discussed this sixth point in the previous lecture but again it is repeating so once again i am explaining this thing now tibial tuberosity okay this projection which is present at the proximal end of the tibia so this projection is known as the tibial tuberosity and this is the tela this one is the tela triangular bone <coughs> So the tela and between the tela and tibial tuberosity, the ligaments are present. So these ligaments are joining the tela and the tibial tuberosity. This ligament are known as the teller ligament. So these are the teller ligament. Okay. So this is the point number six. Okay, regarding the teller ligament. Now moving on the point number seven this is the point number seven now inferior to the tibial tuberosity sharp ridge can be felt below the skin okay for example with your hand if you touch your leg you will find a sharp ridge in your leg so that sharp ridge is known as the anterior border or the crest or the shin. For example, in this figure, this is the this is the entire anterior border. Okay, so here the name is written that is the anterior border. So where the anterior border is present. So inferior to tibial tuberosity, sharp ridge, we can felt below our skin and this ridge is known as the anterior border. Point number seven and this is the figure for it. I am zooming so that you can see it properly. Anterior border, okay, entire anterior border you can observe. Now moving on the point number 8. Now point number 8. Now this is the, first of all you observe the tibia. So this is the tibia and this one is the medial surface of the tibia. Okay, medial surface you observe. Now what is there in this? eighth point now first I am explaining the theory point then I will explain you this theory point with the help of figure okay so what is there in the theory point now the medial surface of the distal end of the tibia forms the medial malus okay so this is the medial surface okay and at the distal end what this medial surface is doing so as you can see it is forming the hammer like structure and this hammer like structure which is formed by the medial surface of the tibia is known as the medial malleus so medial <coughs> malleus hammer like structure and this medial malleus 
it joins with it articulates with the talus bone of the ankle okay so i am showing you for example you observe this this is the this one is the medial malus and how it is join joining the how it is articulating with the talus bone so here you can see in this figure it is clearly visible There's, then this is the medial malleus okay this part is the medial malleus and this one this bone is the talus bone of our ankle so the medial malleus is here we can see it is articulating with the talus bone of the ankle and the joint which is formed between the medial malleus and the talus this joint okay so this joint right now that with the blue color that i am showing you this joint is known as the talo crural joint ankle joint so this is talo crural joint okay so this was the this is the joint that the medial malus is making okay now <coughs> moving on the ninth point now here fibular notch now this is the this this entire this is the distal end of tibia and on the distal end of tibia this part as you can see the fibular notch is present so this is the fibular notch is present okay and this fibular notch is articulating with the distal end of the fibula so this is the distal end of the fibula that i am drawing right now and it is articulating this part which is articulating with the fibular notch of the tibia so this articulation this joint is known as the tibio fibular joint so this joint is the tibio fibular joint okay so this is the point number nine now point number ten now <laughs> when we compare tibia <laughs> with the rest of our body bones what happen the tibia is most likely to get fracture so it is getting the fracture open fracture or the compound fracture <coughs> that means many a times not only the single tibia is fractured but along with this it is uh, with it is involved in many bones so when other bones get fracture so this tibia is also getting the fracture due to the uh, fracture in the other bones so this is very fragile bone the tibia is okay that is the meaning of this point many a times the tibia is getting fracture in short <coughs> point number 11 now uh, now this is the now with this we have completed <coughs> the discussion of the <coughs> tibia now I am discussing with you regarding the fibula. Now, first of all, the position of uh, fibula. So, where the fibula is present. So, fibula is parallel and lateral to the tibia, but at the same time, the fibula is smaller than the tibia. So, you can see both the bone that the tibia and fibula. So, you can see almost both the bones are parallel then the fibula is present lateral side of the tibia 
and we can see the fibula is the smaller than the tibia bone okay so this is the point number 11 now moving on the point number 12 now this is the point number 12 now we know that the tibia articulates with the <coughs> femur okay and the knee joint okay the condyles we have learned that but the fibula does not articulate with the femur okay so as you can see over here this is the fibula and this is the distal part of the femur so there is no connection between this fibula and the femur but what the fibula is doing so it does help stabilize the ankle joint so over here this is the distal part of the fibula and you can see these are the bones of our ankle okay so the distal part of the fibula it is involved it is supporting it is stabilizing the ankle joint okay so it is helping the fibula is helping the ankle joint and as well as it is stabilizing the ankle joint so this is the point number 12 now moving on point number 13 now point number 13 in this very important joint name is coming that you need to remember and what is this joint so the first the joint name is tibio fibular joint okay the complete name is the proximal tibio fibular joint and how this joint is going to form so which are the structures that are <coughs> articulating <coughs> in the formation of this joint first of all the head of the fibula the proximal end of the fibula and in this proximal end of the fibula is articulating with the inferior surface of lateral condyle of the tibia so this is the this is the lateral condyle of the tibia and this is this one is the inferior surface of lateral condyle and this is the head of the fibula and this is the proximal end of the fibula so the head and the inferior inferior surface of the lateral condyle of the tibia this two thing they are articulating at this point so this joint which is formed between the proximal end or the head of the fibula and the inferior surface of lateral condyle of the tibia this joint is known as the proximal tibio fibular joint so you can go through this point okay and this is the figure okay proximal tibio fibular joint and here you can follow this so exact location okay so as you can see just inferior this is our this is our this one is our knee joint and inferior to knee joint this proximal tibio fibular joint is present okay and which are the structure that are involved 
in the formation of this joint so head of the fibula proximal end and the inferior surface of the lateral condyle these two structure are involved in the formation of proximal tibiofibular joint moving on the point number 14 now now the distal end this end of the fibula so the distal end of the fibula so it is the projection like the arrowhead so this is the head of the arrow so what they are writing the distal end of the fibula it looks like the arrowhead shape so this is the arrowhead shape okay and this arrowhead shape projection is known as the lateral malleolus so this one is the lateral malleolus and this lateral malleolus is articulating with the talus of the ankle so here <coughs> you, this is the lateral malleus and this is the talus so this talus articulates with the lateral malleus okay <coughs> of the fibula and here also okay lateral malleus this is lateral malleus and it is art articulating with the talus of the ankle now and this forming the lateral surface on the ankle the prominence now you can feel this prominence on the later now what do you need to do to feel this prominence this lateral malleus that you bent uh, when you bend your body and you try to touch your feet okay uh, just above the ankle from inferior side okay between your two legs so you can felt this lateral malleus okay so this is the point number 14 and 15 uh, now moving on point number 16 now point number 16 is the same this distal tibiofibular joint again they are repeating so same point point number 16 this joint okay fibular notch and the distal end of the fibula so that articulation is known as the tibiofibular joint moving on point number 17 now with this we have completed the discussion of the fibula now we are starting to discuss the skeleton of the foot that means which are the bones that are present in our foot okay so first of all the ankle ankle also known as the tarsus so the ankle or the tarsus is the proximal region of our foot and in our ankle there are seven tarsal bones are present so one by one I am showing you so in short the remembering over here that in our ankle there are seven bones and the names of this bone so talus is there so I am showing you the talus bone so here talus bone you can count the number so talus okay then calcaneus heel okay 
located in the posterior part of the foot. Calcaneus. Calcaneus, posterior part of our foot. Calcaneus means hill. Okay. So, we have seen the talus and calcaneus. Okay. Now, five more are remaining. Now, point number 18. Now, now what is this calcaneus bone is? So, calcaneus. Calcaneus bone is the largest and strongest tarsal bone. Point number 19. Now point number 19 is here. Now remaining. 5. Okay. So. Now the anterior tarsal bones are the navicular. La, nav navicular means their shape is like a little boat okay so the anterior tarsal bones are the navicular so here this navicular so it is a little boat like this bone navicular then three cuneiform bones And these three cuneiform bones are medial, intermediate and lateral. So you can see this. Okay. So medial, intermediate and lateral cuneiform bone. Okay. And the last one that is cuboid. It is cube shape. So the cuboid, this one is the cuboid bone. So total, now count total 7. See, 1 talus, then 1 calcaneus, 1 navicular, this 3. And this one so this way total becomes seven so there are total seven ankle bone okay so this is the point number 19 and this is the figure okay so this is the figure now point number 20 now here, to remember the name of this tarsal bone, they have given the formula and this formula is known as the mnemonic for the tarsal. Okay, so with this formula you can remember the name of the tarsal bone. Now what is the formula? So tall centers never take swords from corners. So they have taken first alphabet from each name. Okay, from each word they are taking the first. For example, from tall they have taken capital T, then center, capital C, then capital N. So T for talus. C for calcaneus, navicular, third, second, first, cuneiform, and last, cuboid. So if you want, you can use this formula to remembering the name. Okay. So this is the point number 20. Now moving on, point number 21. So... Point number 21, I have explained this point number 21, 
okay so this medial malus which is hammer like okay <coughs> and this medial surface at the distal end it is forming the medial malus and you can feel this medial malus okay when you bend your body with your hand if you touch your feet okay so on the outer lateral side you can feel this projection that is the medial malus and since i have already explained this point point number 21 okay this is the point number 21 i have explained so now we are moving on the point number 22 now in point number 22 the weight bearing capacities of our ankle bones so when we are walking what happens most of, most of our body weight first the body weight transform into the talus bone then this talus bone transform the body weight into the calcaneus and the rest of the body weight then it is transformed to the other part of the foot okay so that is the meaning of this point number 22 how the body weight is channelized amongst the ankle bone now moving on point number 23 now the middle part of our foot is known as the metatarsus so this is the metatarsus region of our foot and the bone which are present in the metatarsus region are known as the metatarsal bone so as you can see there are five one one two three four and five metatarsal bone from medial to lateral they are present so in metatarsus there are five metatarsal bone this is point number 23 now moving on point number 24 now you remember that in our palm the metacarpals were present okay so this over here in our foot metatarsals are present and this metatarsals are also having the same areas as the metacarpals for example over here you can see <coughs> the metacarpal they are having this is they are having base then in between the middle part is known as the body or shaft and on the top okay so on the top the head is present so each metatarsal bone is having three region base body and head this is point number 24 now how this metatarsal they are making the joint okay so metatarsal articulate proximally with the first second and third cuneiform bones and the cuboid bone first second third here they are joining with the here as you can see they are joining they are articulating with the cuneiform bones okay and this two they are articulating with the cuboid bone so the articulation between the metatarsal bone and cuneiform and cuboid bone so this articulation with the black line is known as the tarso metatarsal joint so tarso metatarsal joint point number 25 and this is the figure okay this black line now moving on point number 26 
Now, this metatarsal bone, dors, uh, distally, what they are doing? Distally, they articulate with the proximal row of the phalanges. So, these are the phalanges. Okay. And this is the, this one is the, this one is the proximal row of phalanges. So, they are articulating with the proximal row of the phalanges okay now first metatarsal <coughs> is thicker first metatarsal is thicker <coughs> than the other so the other one two three four five this remaining metatarsal they are thinner one okay because the first metatarsal needs to bear the more weight that's why it is the thicker one now point number 27 now this point is regarding the <coughs> phalanges okay so the digits of our foot or the fingers of our foot so the bone <coughs> of our <coughs> <coughs> the bones of our foot finger are known as the phalanges okay so the distal component of foot resemble those of hand both in the number and arrangement see the twos are number one to five beginning the grade two for example this one is the this one is the grade two okay from so this is number one then this is number two this is three four and this one is the five so these are the five number are given to them now each phalanx consists of for example this one is the one so singular is phalanx okay <coughs> so <coughs> each phalanx <coughs> each phalanx <coughs> is consist of base body and head okay so this three part so this is head this is body and this is base okay so this is the point number 28 okay then point number 29 the great or big toe hallux has two large heavy phalanges this is the great toe and it is having two this one and this one two large heavy phalanges okay so these are called this is this one is the proximal this one is the proximal phalange and this one is the distal phalange and other four twos this one, this one, this one, this one, this four proximal, middle, distal. So all this two they are having. This is the proximal. Okay, this one. One once again. One minute. This is the proximal this one is the middle and this one is the distal phalange okay so in first toe there are two phalange proximal and distal and the remaining four toe they are having three phalangeal bone proximal middle and distal so this is point number 13 and now this joint interphalangeal joint so the joint between the phalangeal bone this joint this joint this joint this joint so these joints between the phalangeal bone this joint are known as 
interphalangeal joint okay so this joints are known as the interphalangeal joint okay so before i wind up this presentation lecture i would like to show you all the figures so if you have any point so you can go through the figure and observe this so this is the figure So with this, I have completed this presentation lecture on the lower limb, both the part we have completed. I hope you have enjoyed this presentation lecture and at the same time I hope this presentation lecture will be helpful in your exam preparation and in your studies. My name is Manish Koshti sir, I am from Ahmedabad, India. Bye bye. Namaste.